I spent more time in prison than I did in the free world. I came to jail when I was 17 years old. So it's like freedom, it's hard to visualize for me. Just being in prison was um, a life of just hopelessness and loneliness. And um, you're constantly worried about what your life is going to be like when you return to society. And mm -hmm. BPI not only just gave me an education, but a lot of hope and a strong desire to be a good human being mm -hmm. and to return to society and contribute. The statistics are out there that higher education for prisoners work in terms of recidivism rate, right? Mm -hmm. But the biggest problem in society is that we don't see the people behind bars, that they are people and that they are human beings. Mm -hmm. And because we see them through the glimpses of Hollywood movies and documentaries that show prisoners acting like violent and irrational beings, we don't want to help them. But this documentary is trying, trying to change that narrative. We're trying to give a, a glimpse of the truth. Okay. And now give the people an opportunity to say, all right, let's reimagine this. Education actually is ageless, and I think we live in a country and we are kind of programmed to think that you need to have a certain foundational education and learn certain things by a certain time, when actually what is thrilling about being in a BPI classroom is not only the diversity of the students, but their educational backgrounds, to your point, and also the fact that somebody who is 35 and may not have a great math background writes a senior project in applied mathematics. So you went from Rikers to what prison? I went to Riker, from Rikers to Sing Sing Correctional. Okay, and that, is that where you... No, it took me about four years to land in a prison where BPI functioned because wow. BPI only functions in a small amount of prisons in New York State. So what was your morale like at those prisons? I, um, suicidal. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Um, yeah. I, I wanted to have purpose and I couldn't find it in prison. And so this kind of threw you a lifeline? I, I like program. to tell people that it gave me life in a literal way. Because we're in prison, we're not animals. These green color, they don't define who we are. You know what defines us is, that, is our minds and our hearts, that we have moralities even in prison. We have intelligent men even in prison. So you picked social studies. Why social studies? You learn about others, and learning about others, you begin to empathize with them. I think what's wonderful about a liberal arts education is that it pushes you to see and imagine the world outside of what you're experiencing on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, mm -hmm. you're able to not only, even though you may disagree with someone, mm -hmm. you at least are, give, are willing to give the chance to understand why they think that way and how they think that way. Mm -hmm. And for me coming from a place where I was only thinking about myself, that's why liberal arts education was just something I wanted to do. Wow, so empathy. Empathy. Yeah. College, it helps us become civic beings. It helps us understand that we have an interest in our community, that our community is a part of us and we are a part of it. When I first told people that um, I got into BPI, they weren't that excited. They were like, oh, you know, good for you. Mm -hmm. Because the idea is that higher education in prison mm -hmm. is probably just something that should just give at you, right? It's right. low level. Um, you're a prisoner, they're going to assume you're stupid, so they're not going to make it hard on you. Mm -hmm. However, after having discussions with me, after uh, reading my papers, because I used to send them home sometimes, mm -hmm. they were amazed by the improvements year by year. Mm -hmm. And they're like, wow, this is really hard stuff. And I was talking about subjects that my friends could talk about, subjects right. that they took outside. Right. Yeah, so that was pretty incredible. Is there hope for getting a program like this in prisons all over the country? I mean, you talked about how the criminal justice reform debate is very alive and vibrant right. right now. And there's certainly people on the other side who still say some of the same things we heard in 94. This is okay. costly to taxpayers, why should we do it? I'm wondering if there is hope for getting something like this out there. In New York, approximately $60,000 a year is spent for each prisoner in, the, in, mm. in the New York, right? Mm. For every dollar studies show that you invest in higher education, we'll mm. save you $4. Four to $4 five. to $5. Mm. Yeah. 
So mm. think about again the national recidivism rate between 50 and 60 percent, and BPI's recidivism rate of 4 percent. Mm -hmm. If you do the math, you're going to save so much money. This is what I'm saying to the people who are concerned with the monetary aspect of this argument, right? Mm -hmm. But and on a moral level, we also have to question what is prison for? Do we strictly just want to punish them so that they come home, right? 95% of prisoners are going to come home. What do you want these prisoners who come home to do? Mm -hmm. If they're going to go back to a prison, that means they're going to commit other crimes. And that means taxpayers have to pay more money for the sentence that they have to do again. So it just makes sense on a moral and economical level. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out these other videos from USA Today to stay up to date with all the latest news.